good morning all of you. Um, so today we will look at uh, uh, in fact uh, continuation of the last class which was extending Greit solution. The Greit solution was originally proposed by uh, uh, grades for a slug flow profile and it looks at the thermally developing region or the thermal entry region wherein you are uh, hydrodynamically fully developed and you are looking at only the entrance region where the thermal boundary layer is developing for such kind of a uh, 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 that is what we call as region 2. So grides assumed a slug flow so where anyway the slug flow does not vary uh, and it is uh, uniform everywhere and he had developed a solution for constant wall temperature which we had seen earlier. So there uh, the Eigen functions were what, what were the Eigen functions essential in the original Greitz problem. So the Eigen the Eigen value problem there was actually a Bessel equation right. So now uh, the same problem can be extended to a case which is uh, more realistic that is for a parabolic velocity profile okay it was this extension was done by a group of people Sellar et al, uh, Sellar Stribus uh, and I have posted that in the Moodle you can just have a look originally in 1954 how they uh, did the extension to the Wright's problem. Of course uh, nowadays uh, the solution is more by numerical methods they try to do a approximate technique where they uh, did something for R close to uh, the wall uh, the R which is somewhere in the middle and R which is far away from the wall and they patched up all the solutions together. So what we are go doing uh, nowadays is uh, directly go for a numerical solution to the eigenvalue problem. So the easier way to start is to introduce these non-dimensional variables for temperature as usual we define theta as T minus T wall by T i minus T wall since this is a constant wall temperature boundary condition and your inlet temperature is also assumed constant so this is an appropriate definition for theta once you have a constant wall flux boundary condition then you cannot define theta this way okay because your when you take the differential with respect to x your wall temperature will not be a constant and therefore they will not cancel out on both the sides and this is the non-dimensional radial coordinate and uh, your axial non-dimensional axial coordinate can be non-dimensionalized in this manner which is somewhat similar to an inverse of the Greitz number your uh, Greitz number one, 1 by Greitz number is actually x by d by Peclé number okay. So this is somewhat similar exactly now we are not using x by d here but x by r naught. So when we substitute into the energy equation okay the energy equation for thermally developing flow is this and if, if it had been fully developed your d theta by dx would have been 0 but in this case your uh, flow is still uh, developing and therefore uh, if you substitute you get a partial differential equation in terms of uh, uh, theta which is a function of both the axial coordinate zeta and your non-dimensional radial coordinate eta and the boundary conditions are at uh, the entry region that is at zeta equal to 0 so your t equal to ti so therefore your theta will be 1 and and at uh, the location r equal to r naught that is at the wall okay so your coordinate system that you are looking is something like this this is your r and this is your x okay so this is your r naught so at r equal to r naught that is your uh, eta equal to 1 that is where your theta equal to 0 where your t is equal to t wall so this is where you apply constant wall temperature and at eta equal to 0 that is at r equal to 0 center line there is a symmetry in the profile so therefore your uh, gradient at the center line should be 0. So now once you assume that uh, you can use separation of variables to solve this we introduce uh, theta and we break up the solution as a product of two independent solutions one is a function of only eta the other is a function of uh, uh, zeta so we introduce x as a function of zeta and r as a function of eta and then substitute into the PDE 
and then we get two we reduce the PDU to two ordinary differential equations through the eigenvalue lambda square okay and the the eigenvalue problem here is basically the one with homogeneous boundary conditions which is basically in the eta direction and if you compare this uh, to the Bessel equation you can find that this last term here is not same so therefore this is not a Bessel equation if you look at these first two terms they appear similar but the third term is not the same as it is a function of uh, uh, you have um, eta if you multiply by uh, eta square you will have eta square into 1 minus eta square that comes different from the Bessel equation and these kind of uh, general eigenvalue problems are called sturm liouville eigenvalue problems okay so any kind of an eigenvalue problem whether this is a Bessel equation or a basic uh, ODE can be represented as a sturm liouville eigenvalue problem so the 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 sturm liouville eigenvalue problem can be cast into a, a differential equation like this of course you can express this also in this particular form and the sturm liouville problems have a particular property that when you integrate your uh, eigen function you multiply your eigen function and you multiply it with the weighing function the weighing function is this which appears on the right hand side so this is the particular property this is your Kronecker delta <coughs> so if m equal to n then this will be equal to 1 otherwise it will be 0 okay so now if you compare your uh, eigenvalue problem to the sturm liouville problem okay so you can write your uh, eigenvalue problem into the sturm liouville form so that will come out as minus d by d eta into eta dr by d eta plus the term corresponding to q of x is 0 here and this term can go to the right hand side and that can be expressed as lambda square into 1 minus eta square into eta into r so I am multiplying throughout by eta and the first two terms I can combine and write it in this particular format okay now the format is the same as the sturm liouville format you can compare the coefficients your p of x is nothing but eta q of x is 0 and your weighing function is 1 minus eta square into eta so this is your weighing function as a function of eta okay so this can be written as 0 to 1 so this is strictly speaking a to b okay in your case your eta goes from 0 to 1 that is why I have just used 0 to 1 there so this is 0 to 1 and this will be r n of eta into r m of eta into weighing function here which is eta into 1 minus eta square d eta is equal to delta m n <coughs> times uh, 1 by 2 lambda because here your lambda square is your lambda so this is square root of lambda square which is lambda n into uh, dr n by d lambda n into dr n by d eta at eta equal to 1 okay so this is this is how the corresponding property of sturm liouville uh, comes out to be in this case and if you want to write the final solution for theta which is basically x into r so you know the eigen functions now in this particular case this is an ode and to get the eigen function you have no other option but to solve it numerically okay you can once again go back to your uh, shooting method you can reduce it to two first order ODEs and then here guess the value of lambda because you do not know the value of lambda unless you know the value of lambda you cannot find out the eigen function so guess the value of lambda and once again you have to satisfy the other boundary condition and that is iteratively found out and that is the suitable value of lambda so like this for the given value of lambda you have a particular value of eigen function so for each value of lambda you have to find the eigen functions 
and finally the solution will be a superposition of all these eigen functions okay so that can be written as a constant times the eigen function into the other solution for x the other for solution for x has a function of zeta that is a very straightforward ode which can be directly integrated and that will be in terms of constant times e power minus lambda square zeta okay so this is your final solution for theta having determined your eigen functions and your eigen values you can therefore plug in into this expression and find the uh, variation of the temperature i will just uh, give you a representation of uh, how the eigen functions look if you solve for them and if you plot the first three eigen functions rn uh, zero it varies uh, between negative minus 1 to 1 zero 0.5 so this is your r not r1 and r2 this is a this is a representation of uh, so this r not r1 r2 so here you have plotted with respect to eta yeah okay so this the so this is the eigen function corresponding to n equal to 0 that is for lambda 0 okay and this is the eigen function corresponding to lambda 1 so for different each eigen eigen value sorry for eigen value lambda 0 lambda 1 lambda 2 you substitute into the ode and you can get the corresponding eigen function variation with respect to eta so these are the first three eigen functions so these are the most important ones there are other higher order eigen functions but their contribution will be relatively smaller so when you sum them you take only the first three or four important eigen functions into account okay so now the thing is uh, this is the solution but still we have to find the constant cn okay so for this we have to apply the initial condition that is at zeta equal to 0 and we make use of the property of the sturm liouville when you integrate with the weighing function so this is basically since this is an orthogonal all sturm liouville problems all are orthogonal so this this is a property which satisfies the orthogonal condition so this is an orthogonality condition of sturm liouville system of problems and we will make use of this in calculating the constant so let me call this as equation number 1 and i am going to multiply both sides by rm and integrate so so for first before doing that i will apply the condition at zeta equal to 0 which is equal to 1 so therefore 1 equal to summation n equal to 0 to infinity c n you have r n of eta into e power minus lambda n square 0 so that is 1 so I can now multiply both sides by r m of eta and the weighing function okay so the weighing function is here eta into 1 minus eta square d eta and integrate from 0 to 1 so this is also the same I have rm eta into eta into 1 minus eta square d eta okay so multiply by this uh, rm eta into the weighing function and integrate both sides 
So now I make use of my orthogonality property. So therefore, only for m equal to n, this will be non-zero. Okay. So this will turn out to be zero to one r n of eta into eta into one minus eta square d eta. On this side, you can sum only if m equal to n. So therefore, this will be zero to one and the constant can come out okay so this will be rn square of eta because if m equal to n then only this will be 1 so this will be rn square eta into eta into 1 minus eta square d eta okay so therefore my constant cn will be 0 to 1 r n eta eta into 1 minus eta square d eta divided by 0 to 1 integral r n square eta into so now I have to evaluate these integrals how do I do that for example the integral in the denominator how do I calculate integral 0 to 1 rn square eta into 1 minus eta square d eta yes so that will be 1 by 2 lambda n into this particular thing right so I already know from the property of sturm liouville system of equations that the denominator 0 to 1 R n square into eta into eta into one minus eta square d eta should be equal to uh, one by two lambda n into d r n by d lambda n into d r n by d eta at eta equal to one okay so this is what I get from integrating the denominator and how about the numerator how about the numerator you have a very nice clue you have basically the the eigen value problem here from this if you integrate both the sides okay so if you integrate this that is basically uh, you have already r into eta into 1 minus eta square d eta and this will be therefore on this side minus 1 by lambda square into uh, you have eta into dr by d eta and you are integrating between 0 and 1 so at 0 eta will be 0 so therefore this should be at eta equal to 1 this will be 1 right so this comes from the Eigen value problem itself so I can just integrate and I can find out the value of this okay so therefore now I can write my constant cn so if I substitute for this integral and this integral what will be the constant minus 2 by lambda n and so this will be dr by d eta at eta equal to 1 and denominator dr by d eta these two will cancel off so you have only this in the denominator so you have into 1 by dr n by d lambda n corresponding to eta equal to 1 correct okay so this and this cancels off you have minus 2 by lambda n and this in the denominator so now 
for calculating this constant c as a function of n this is a function of n so for different values of eigen value lambda 0 lambda 1 lambda 2 i need to know what is the derivative of the eigen function with respect to lambda okay corresponding to eta equal to 1 so therefore now for different values of lambda for eta equal to 1 i should know what is the value of the eigen function and then i should fit some approximate curve and calculate the slope okay so that basically corresponding to eta equal to 1 from there i can calculate my constant c okay so i can finally substitute for c into my equation number 1 for the solution uh, So and therefore the solution for theta can be uh, written as minus 2 this can be taken out and I have summation uh, n equal to 0 to infinity and for cn uh, so the other these are all functions of n so I have to just keep it inside the summation I have e power minus lambda n square zeta into rn of eta divided by lambda n into dr n by d lambda n at eta equal to 1 okay so I have simply substituted for C of, C of n from what I have obtained here all right so finally once so once I know my eigen functions my eigen values and this derivative I can now finally find the solution for theta so this is my final solution so I will go uh, further and I will calculate the expression for the Nusselt number the local Nusselt number So therefore now I will define my local heat transfer coefficient as k dt by dr at r equal to r naught divided by t wall minus t mean this is my definition of local h and from, from substituting the temperatures in terms of theta and everything in terms of non-dimensional radial coordinates eta okay so this will be if you substitute for t in terms of theta you remember that theta is t minus t i by so t minus t wall by t i minus t wall okay so this will be t i minus t wall into d theta by d r at r equal to r naught divided by t wall minus t n okay uh, now I can define a mean temperature non-dimensional mean temperature which is theta m as T m minus T wall by T i minus T wall so here T is a function of both r and x here T mean will be a function of only x okay so I can define a non-dimensional mean temperature and you see that T wall minus T m by T i minus T wall is nothing but minus theta m okay so I can write this as minus k d theta by dr at r equal to r naught by theta m what I can also do is uh, replace r in terms of eta so therefore this will be eta into r naught and this will be at eta equal to 1 because you are eta is r by r naught so I can replace directly with respect to eta so all I need to know is my mean temperature theta m and also the non-dimensional gradient of temperature at the wall so once these two are calculated I can find the expression for hx so from the <coughs> equation for theta let me call this as equation number 2 now I can go on and 
calculate the expression for first theta m. So therefore I can uh, write my theta m as follows. So how do I define my bulk mean temperature? According to the basic definition I take my non-dimensional temperature, multiply it by the velocity and integrate across the cross sectional area. So that is 2 pi into r dr okay. So this is from 0 to r naught. So this I divide it again by the mass flow rate. So that is 2 pi integral 0 to r naught into u of r into r dr okay. This and this cancels. Now I define my bulk mean velocity or mean velocity as once again 1 by so this is 0 to r naught u of r into r dr so this will be uh, 1 2 this will be 2 by r naught square correct okay so i can now substitute for this right here in terms of the mean velocity so this is uh, basically integral 0 to r naught theta into u of r into r dr divided by this will be r naught square into um by 2 okay. So since um is only a function of x I can take this inside the integral and I can write this as u by um into r dr. So I can now convert this completely in terms of uh, non-dimensional uh, coordinates okay. So this will be 2 0 to 1 theta into u by um into eta into d eta because I have r by r naught here dr by r naught okay. So this will be my expression for theta m as a function of non-dimensional theta and u by um okay. So I can now substitute I already have my expression for u by um what is the expression for u by um that is from the fully developed parabolic velocity profile right that is twice 1 minus eta square in terms of the non-dimensional coordinate okay. So I can substitute for theta coming from equation 2 and the velocity profile from this into theta m so so this will become minus 2 summation of n equal to 0 to infinity e power minus lambda n square eta divided by lambda n into dr n by d lambda n corresponding to eta equal to 1 into uh, 0 to 1 then I have uh, so 2 into 2 4 okay into eta into 1 minus eta square into r which is also a function of eta okay r n of eta into d eta I will just uh, erase okay. So I am just substituting for theta and u by um into this and I am grouping all the terms which are function of eta and that I am integrating from 0 to 1. So that is basically 4 times eta into 1 minus eta square into r into d eta right. So this eta into 1 minus eta square r n eta d eta what is this value. So we have already seen that this is nothing but 1 by lambda n square into dr by by d lambda at eta equal to 1 
okay so we'll just substitute that and my theta m now becomes uh, so 4 into 2 becomes 8 here uh, this is a minus sign here okay just take note of it so minus and minus become plus here so 8 into summation n equal to 0 to infinity into uh, <coughs> Uh, so that is a dr by dr by d lambda n at eta equal to 1 uh, no this should be with respect to eta sorry therefore this comes out with respect to eta please correct it okay so this is dr n by d eta here okay so this this is one of the terms multiplied by e power minus lambda n square into zeta and divided by you have a lambda n square here and there is a lambda n here so this becomes lambda n cube into already you have a term dr n by d lambda n so this becomes dr n by d lambda n corresponding to eta equal to one okay so this uh, is your expression for theta m so now you have a closed form expression for theta m as a function of the eigen value and the derivative of eigen function both derivative as a with respect to eta as well as with respect to lambda okay so now we need to still find d theta by d eta with respect to eta equal to 1 what is this value directly you can differentiate that is minus 2 summation n equal to 0 to infinity e power minus lambda n square zeta into this will be uh, your dr n by d eta at eta equal to 1 divided by lambda n into dr n by d lambda n at eta equal to 1 okay so therefore we will substitute for theta m and d theta by d eta So therefore if I substitute I can uh, so I can also write my so I have my expression for hx as minus k by r naught I can directly get an expression for nu which is defined as h into r naught by k uh, so it should be actually defined with respect to d therefore I will write this as h into d naught and so this will be d naught by 2 therefore this will be minus 2 into d theta by d eta at eta equal to 1 divided by theta m okay so I can substitute for d theta by d eta and uh, my theta m so that gives my n u x as summation n equal to 0 to infinity a n e power minus lambda n square zeta divided by twice n equal to 0 to infinity a n by lambda n square e power minus lambda n square zeta where a n is nothing but d r n by d eta at eta equal to 1 divided by lambda n into dr n by okay so I will give you a couple of minutes you can substitute and check for yourself it is just straightforward I am just grouping this entire term dr by d eta divided by lambda into dr by d lambda this has a constant 
which is a function of n okay so I call this as a n okay so this will be nothing but therefore a n into summation of n equal to 0 to infinity power minus lambda n square that is the numerator divided by the theta m also has the same term so in addition I have lambda n cube here so therefore this will be a n by lambda n square into this okay the numerator has uh, basically 2 into 2 4 denominator as 8 therefore there is 1 by 2 there okay I hope all of you are clear I am going uh, pretty slow here uh, so therefore this is your final expression now to, to calculate my Nusselt number here I need to basically know numerically the values of all these slopes of Eigen function with respect to eta as well as with respect to lambda and also the Eigen values so from there I can calculate my Nusselt number once I know the location axial location where I need to so my Nusselt number is now only a function of my axial location non dimensional axial location so what Sellers did if you look at that particular uh, uh, paper which I posted so he did it numerically and he has predetermined the values of all these constants and tabulated them so I am just going to give only the final values tabulated by Sellars okay so uh, you can also uh, see the, uh, the for the value of corresponding to n lambda n the value of c n and a n okay so c n is required where in your solution for theta okay so that he also everything has been computed numerically so for n equal to 0 the most important Eigen value that is your 2.7043 the value of c n is 1.466 0.748 and similarly for 1, 2, 3 I will also give the fourth value this is 6.6790, 10.67, and 18.66 minus 0 0.802, 0 0.587 minus 0 0.474 plus 0 0.404 0 0.544 so 0 0.462 and 0 0.38 So the most important, the first five uh, Eigen values, the corresponding constant, C n and A n, they were all numerically calculated and tabulated by Sellars at all. Nineteen fifty-four. So therefore, you can just directly use these values. You don't have to sum them to so many terms. You can just sum them to the first four or five terms okay you can directly substitute the corresponding value of lambda a and in the solution for temperature the value of c then you can get an expression directly in terms of zeta okay so which is basically your non dimensional axial coordinate so for different values of zeta you can actually plot and see how the nusselt number varies right from the location where your uh, thermal entry length starts okay now for the limiting case if you look at a very uh, far away distance axially so that is for large values of lambda for lambda very large you can see that this is an exponentially decaying function okay so except the smallest value of lambda 
if you go for larger values of lambda that is corresponding to n equal to 1 2 3 4 so these are large values and it is already an exponentially decaying function so they will be very small okay so only the first term corresponding to n equal to 0 will be important when you look at large values of zeta so for that this will be reducing to uh, your a naught into uh, so basically you have e power minus lambda naught square into something which is very large okay divided by 2 times you have a naught by lambda naught square into e power minus lambda naught square zeta right I am retaining only the first term and neglecting all the higher terms so this cancel out and this will become so your Nusselt number corresponding to large values of zeta will be nothing but 2 lambda naught square divided by 2 so if you substitute the value of lambda 0 corresponding to n equal to 0 so what will be the value of n u so that is basically 2.7 the whole square divided by 2 any of you anyone who is having a calculator can quickly check that Three point six five six six. Anybody remembers the significance of this number? This is for the the, the case where we de, we started fully developed flows. In the fully developed, both thermally and hydrodynamically fully developed region three, and constant wall temperature boundary condition. So this was the Nusselt number. Okay. So now that we are getting as a asymptotic solution to the thermal thermally developing case for large values of zeta the same same value so this is your fully developed okay so that comes out naturally as an asymptotic solution now to uh, wrap up this particular case as you can see the sturm liouville problems any general sturm liouville problems you cannot find a direct closed form solution you have to do a numerical solution and therefore sometimes it is difficult to do so so once the uh, numerical values are calculated and tabulated there was a person uh, called hausen who actually fitted the empirical curves to this numerical solution for different values of uh, uh, n he, he he took and then he substituted them there and then he fitted set of numerical empirical curves to the numerical solution and then he directly proposed an empirical correlation which is independent of all these constants and the eigen values okay so that is a very famous correlation so that goes as n u is equal to 3.66 plus 0 0.0668 into grides number divided by 1 plus 0 0.04 grides number to the power 2 thirds okay where your grides number is defined as uh, 1 over uh, or you can say 1 by grides number is basically x by d by Peclet number okay so this is a very simpler correlation you just substitute the axial location non dimensional form as a grides number into this expression and you directly get your local Nusselt number okay you do not have to find out Eigen values the corresponding constant corresponding to n equal to 0 1 2 3 for this okay this is an empirical correlation which fits very well with the exact solution okay so you can see for the limiting case where your x by d goes to very large values your 1 by grides number is basically see here your grides number becomes very small for large values of x by d so then this particular term here disappears and it will lead to the limiting case of 3.66 which is the 
nasal number for fully developed flow okay so if you want to just uh, plot the axial variation of the local nusselt number with respect to 1 over grides number so you will find that uh, this is for the constant heat flux case anybody remember what is the asymptotic solution 4 point 4.3 point, 4 point roughly this is for the constant heat flux and this dotted line here is for constant wall temperature and the asymptotic case leads to the value of 3.6 okay so if you plot the local variation you know once you have the first five dominant terms you plot it as a function of uh, 1 over grides number and you will find that exponentially it is a decaying function okay and also you can plot both the constant wall flux boundary condition case constant wall temperature boundary condition case the constant wall flux case has a slightly higher nusselt number and asymptotically that will reach to a value of 4.3 and constant wall temperature case reaches to 3.6 okay so this is to give an idea about the thermally developing region now as i said how do we get the constant heat flux case okay so that's a that's a slightly different problem okay the problems that we have solved in the class corresponding to constant wall temperature boundary condition okay and parabolic velocity distribution this was an extension which was proposed by sellers extension of the grides problem now the other extension is for a non uniform wall temperature that is for case where you can have a axial variation of wall temperature which is a linear variation or you can also have a constant heat flux boundary condition so these were proposed also by sellers and i have uploaded a document on the a moodle which gives the extended uh, solution for the case of a plug flow the velocity profile is plug flow but the boundary condition is a constant wall flux boundary condition okay so there uh, i'll probably in the tomorrow's class give you hints how to approach that problem there the boundary condition is non homogeneous because you have a defined heat flux so the thing is how do we homogeneize that boundary condition for getting an eigen value problem so that that is the key once you know how to do that after that the rest of the things are straight forward so to get an idea you can just look into the uh, moodle where i have posted for the case of uh, parallel plates okay that's a much simpler case to deal with the so cartesian coordinate system and uh, taken case of plug flow and uh, constant <coughs> wall, wall flux condition okay so i'll give you uh, i'll just describe the uh, a procedure briefly and you can go over the document and you can do the same thing for the uh, case of circular tube balls okay so with that uh, the developing case will be over the thermally developing case or the thermal entry length cases will be done and uh, finally we look at the case of uh, simultaneously developing simultaneous entry length problems so those problems we cannot uh, do analytical solutions because you cannot neglect any terms strictly speaking okay we have to go for a full numerical solution to the navier stokes equations there have been some solutions where some approximations have been made but still they were involving a numerical solution so i will just give you the empirical correlations coming out of those uh, solutions and i think tomorrow we should be able to complete uh, this part and the last two classes on uh, thursday and on uh, saturday we look at the approximate solution to the internal flow problems so how do we use the integral method here okay 